Okay, well, welcome everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. We are doing coding with Minecraft or coding with Make Code in Minecraft Education Edition with Bradley Schmerstick today. Uh, he has 20 years of uh, advanced placement physics teacher. He is, is seven years as a professional development and technology trainer four years as an instructional technology specialist, which is his current position in the seventh largest school district in the country. He is a Minecraft or Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert, Master Trainer, Global Minecraft Mentor, and a very own NCCE Professional uh, Learning Specialist. And I am Mary Elizabeth Pearson, and I am your host. Uh, I'll be moderating your um, questions, so please make sure you put those in the chat, and we'll, uh, Bradley and I will be able to make sure you get what you need to understand coding in Minecraft. Take it away. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm excited about sharing what I can tell you about Minecraft Education Edition and primarily about how to do coding with Minecraft Education Edition. And one of my favorite tools called Make Code using the Code Builder inside a Minecraft Education Edition. So I've prepared a bunch of slides to walk us through the process. Uh, I do want you to notice the, the URL on the screen in the center will take you to the very same presentation I'm using during today's session. The URL on the screen is a tiny URL. If you just type it in your web browser at any time, the URL will also be shared at the end of the presentation. So if you miss it now, you can get it later. So and the first Bradley, thing I want to start off. Sorry, with, Bradley, it's also inside of the chat for people to click on the link from there. Awesome reminder. Thank you so much, Mary Elizabeth. The first thing I want to start off with is some big questions that people interested in coding always get from folks in their schools and in their school district. And that is, why, why should we be teaching kids computer science? Uh, why is coding important for kids and why is Minecraft or how can Minecraft help? So my answers in general for why computer science have to do with the fact that computer science teaches kids problem solving and problem solving can be beneficial for any student at any age in any classroom. Why coding? because coding gives students an opportunity to think logically. And again, thinking logically can benefit any student at any grade in any class. And finally, why Minecraft? Mostly because kids love it, first of all. Secondly, because they enjoy playing it all the time. And thirdly, because they can learn how to code while doing something that they love. So today I'm going to break down how to code with Minecraft Education Edition, essentially into three separate parts. The first part allows students to code in Minecraft because, just in case we didn't know this, it's already there. That means that students who play Minecraft already, already know how to use the chat, and they already know how to use cheats and they can command line code, and they might even be able to use command blocks. I'm going to show you exactly how that works today. When you get more advanced, you want to use what's called the code builder, and it allows you to code in blocky coding language, in JavaScript, and in Python. And then finally, if you're a teacher looking for ways to begin teaching computer science in your classroom, there's a complete computer science curriculum available that is supported by Minecraft. So first, let's talk a little bit about chats and cheats. In the screenshot, you'll notice that there's no reason to panic if students are using cheats in Minecraft. Because cheats in Minecraft aren't really cheating. Their advanced knowledge that students find by looking up information online that they can use inside the game to take advantage of the way the game is turning out. 
So as an example, there's a very common command line code that you can use shown in the top left corner of this image, targeting players. And that's a simple matter of using the at symbol followed by a letter like A for all player and so on. And all you have to do is type down in the field where my mouse is currently sitting. So cheats and chats allow students to communicate with one another and interact with simple code to take advantage inside the game. There's a great document, URL is on the screen, that links us to essential commands in Minecraft. And those are the commands that every player should know. The next way to code in Minecraft is to use command line coding, sometimes called slash commands. And so in Minecraft, while playing using slash commands, you can do a lot of creative controlling in your environment. So as an example, if it's raining and the rain is interfering with your build, you can go into the command line code just by typing the slash character on your keyboard. And when you do, if you know the command to clear your weather, you'll, you'll be able to type it in on the command line. And so in this screenshot, you'll notice that the command line code to clear the weather is a forward slash followed by the word weather and a space followed by the word clear. And as soon as you hit enter, the game will clear the weather and you can get back onto your build. Another common command line code that a lot of players take advantage of inside the game is the teleport command. And that's shown on the screen in the little window. So again, in the command line, just type the forward slash and the word teleport. And then you can target any player you want in the game. Teleport allows you to move great distances in a very short period of time, which would otherwise not be allowed. And that's another great advantage of command line coding. Ultimately, students will become advanced players. Potentially already are advanced players. Potentially more advanced than us teachers. And that's OK, because this gives students an opportunity to demonstrate mastery in an in a expressive way, in a creative way. And it lets them build their confidence by teaching us how to do something new in Minecraft. Command blocks is one such example of an advanced skill. Number one, you can't use command blocks unless you're in a creative mode. So if you're in survival mode, a student would either have to know how to change the settings of the game or go into the slash commands and change the mode of the game in order for it to be created. The second thing about command blocks are that you can't find them in the inventory. You have to give them, so, them to yourself using the slash command. So giving yourself a command block is pictured in the small window at the top of the screen, where it says forward slash give at s, which is yourself. And then if you start typing the word command, the rest of the command will appear, command underscore block. So being able to use slash commands leads you to the ability to use command blocks. Ultimately, you'll exhaust the amount of coding that you can do in chats and sheets, command lines, and command blocks. And you'll want to actually begin to code. And that's where Microsoft Make Code comes in. So Microsoft Make Code is 
displayed for you on the screen. It's a website, minecraft.makecode.com. And when you get there, you can either play without logging in or you can log in with the very same account you use when you log into Minecraft. In this example on the screen, I've represented a big arrow here pointing at one of the funnest things to try when you first come in to make code, and that's called Chicken Rain. It gives you an opportunity to move into the game and spawn a number of chickens into your environment. So when you click on Start Here for Chicken Rain, the next thing you'll have an opportunity to do will be to elect to decide which type of coding you'd like to try. You can click on Start Tutorial in Blocks, Python, or JavaScript. And the truth of the matter is, no matter which one you pick, ultimately, you can change between any one of the three. In the picture above, you can see that I've chosen to, to code in blocks. Blocky coding is really one of the most fun methods of coding in Minecraft because it's visual and the pieces fit together like puzzles and the instructions guide you both textually and visually with color. The more advanced players may want to change between coding with blocks or coding with JavaScript or coding with Python. And as I mentioned, you can do that on any of your projects. So once you've saved an activity and it's become a project, all you have to do is click New Project. You can choose Blocks, JavaScript, or Python. And again, if you choose Blocks, you'll get the fun, multicolored, blocky coding that fits together much like puzzle pieces. If you choose JavaScript, you'll be able to code line by line in JavaScript, just like you can in most other JavaScript editing tools. And one thing I really like about the JavaScript is that the color coding from the blocky code is carried over into the JavaScript coding itself. Then you'll notice the function command is blue. That's because it's related to the on chat command, which was also blue in the blocks. You'll notice that the glass command is green, or, or sorry, the code line is green. And that's because it's part of this green for loop that's taken place in the blocks. If you're an advanced coder and you would like to move beyond JavaScript, you can even code in Python. And the color coding from the blocks to the JavaScript to the Python also carries over to a certain degree. And to change between any one of the versions that you've chosen, all you got to do is come back up to the toolbar at the top and click the appropriate button for blocks, JavaScript, or Python. If you're a teacher and you're looking forward to finding some resources that will help you begin to use coding with Minecraft, I want to direct you to the Minecraft Education website. It's at education.minecraft.net. There's specifically a lesson created called Intro to Computer Science with Make Code. It's pictured on the screen now. When you select this lesson, you'll have the opportunity to download an entire series of resources prepared already for the teacher to help you teach coding with Minecraft to your students. One of the most important parts of the lesson to me is that it gives you the opportunity to download a complete curriculum written for middle school students. That curriculum includes activities and lesson plans and, act and even relationships between worlds that already exist in Minecraft and the lessons your students will do. My favorite way to download that curriculum is to use the OneNote notebook that's available as well. Opening the notebook up in OneNote gives you the opportunity to look at the lessons individually, modify them to suit your need, 
and share notebook pages and or content with your students directly. When you click to download the notebook, it'll give you the opportunity to sign up now to be included with Minecraft curriculum reminders and other notifications from the Minecraft Education Edition website. I would highly recommend it. So ultimately, after you've worked your way through many of the resources and experimented a little bit in Minecraft with command line coding and chats and cheats and possibly even with some of the command block opportunities, you might be ready to start to find out what else there is to learn and fill in the holes around your current knowledge. We want you to know that you are not alone and there's a great deal of resources out there that you can access at your own pace from your comfy office chair at home or while you're sitting on the sofa. So I'm going to break that down into the following three categories. What can I find on the Microsoft Education Center? We call it the MEC. What can I do with my students right away? And we like Hour of Code. And what else can I find at the Minecraft home website at education.minecraft.net? So in the next few minutes, I'm going to break those down just a little bit so you can see what's available. So at the Microsoft Education Center called the Mac, there's two, primarily two things that I think educators are going to get from this location. Number one, you're going to find resources that can help you learn to play Minecraft better. You can also find resources that can help you learn to teach with Minecraft. And those two skills are a little bit different. Learning how to play will help you be able to design your lessons better and help you uh, react with how your students are working in Minecraft. Learning how to teach will help you develop lesson plans that will be curriculum based and align with the goals and objectives of your classroom. So when you get to the Microsoft Education website, it's at education.microsoft.com. When you get there, the two things that you will hopefully want to take a look at are number one, exploring courses. And if you click here where it says browse courses, you'll have the opportunity to type at the top of the screen in a search field. In this screenshot, I typed in the word Minecraft. When I did, a number of things came up on the screen. One was a direct link to the code.org Minecraft Hour of Code facilitation training course that's available on the Mac. This course teaches you exactly how to teach using Minecraft at the code.org site. Another course that came up was called Building Blocks of Code. And this is the first activity that a teacher should do to begin to understand how you can use coding with Minecraft. Sometimes it's important for teachers to, instead of doing individual courses, put themselves on a path that has already been built for you by experts who have linked a number of courses together. Those are called learning paths. So if you want to explore a learning path, once again, click where it says Brow learning, Browse Learning Paths. And again, at the top of the screen, type in Minecraft. In this event, my favorite course came up. It's called My Minecraft Journey. And it's a group of lessons here pictured on the right that lead you from start to finish how to become a better Minecraft player and how to teach more effectively with Minecraft. 
Now, a person can do any of these lessons as often as they like and or as complete as they wish. You can come and go. You can come back in it and leave. Or you can go from start to finish and complete every lesson in the module. If you elected to sign in at the Microsoft Education Center with your Office 365 account, as an example, then it'll track your progress and it'll award points for each segment of the learning path. And you'll get digital badges along the way. And you can proudly display those digital badges to your colleagues in your signature line, as an example. If you select the Minecraft Hour of Code tutorials, you could, in fact, go straight to code.org forward slash Minecraft. The code.org site is set up so that you can play Minecraft tutorials directly inside the code.org environment. Why is that important? You might be wondering. And the answer to me is that it enables players to interact with Minecraft and with coding without the need to do an installation of Minecraft on their machine. So it's a great opportunity to get people started. Children of any age can code at the code.org site using Minecraft, and there's no installation required. You'll notice on the screen, my screenshot even shows that you can download an offline version of Minecraft Adventurer that students could play even if they didn't have the internet available to them when they got home. So when you're here at the Minecraft Hour of Code tutorial site, you click on any one of the four that are shown on the screen, Minecraft Voyage Aquatic, Minecraft Hero's Journey, Minecraft Adventurer, or Minecraft Designer and students can get started coding immediately. And just in case you're not aware of Minecraft and what the Hour of Code is all about, every year around the world, teachers get together on a certain day for 24 hours and give students in their classrooms and their homes an opportunity to code for an hour. That's why it's called Hour of Code. But you can do any of these Hour of Code activities any day in any classroom or any home computer anytime you want. Ultimately, teachers are going to need more resources. We all do. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, and you don't have to. If you go to Minecraft's home website, education.minecraft.net, you'll notice there's a menu across the center of the screen. It, one of my favorite places to go in that menu is class resources. When you click on class resources, there's a broad range of things available to teachers. You can get trained, but more importantly, you can click on find a lesson. And you can download lessons that other Minecrafters have uploaded to this site that have already been in use and tested by other teachers and students. You can find a world, and a world is there to support the gameplay of your students. Many lessons have worlds, but many lessons do not require a specific world. So you could choose a lesson and a world and put your students in that world to carry out the lesson. There are also things called challenges. Challenges may very well involve coding, but not all of them do. In this menu under class resources, one of the most important things you'll do is click on code with Minecraft and it'll make all the coding resources that I've shared during this presentation available to you at that location. There are other resources available to there, as you can see, one related to Minecraft Earth Day and some others related to other 
resources around the world. Some of these menu items may change in time, but the majority of them will still be there under class resources. So once again, the most important thing at the Minecraft Education website would be to click on Classroom Resources and take a look at the Lessons, Worlds, Challenges, and Coding with Minecraft. Although this session has gone by very quickly, I have been watching the time and I am close to running over. So I do want to stop and offer anyone who's in this session the opportunity to go to the Microsoft Education Center at education.microsoft.com, sign in with your user profile, which could be your Office 365 account credentials, and redeem today's achievement code. It's pictured here on the left-hand side of the screen. To redeem an achievement code, all you need to do is click on your profile icon in the top right corner of the page, and then choose redeem achievement code, and type in the achievement code that's on the screen today. You can copy and paste this achievement code and redeem it later if you like, it shouldn't expire. Once you redeem the achievement code, the Education Center site will prompt you with a congratulatory uh, screenshot. And in conclusion, I'd like to say thank you all for participating with me today. I hope I didn't go too fast. I know I had a lot to share and most importantly, I have a great deal of resources that I would love for you guys all to be able to access after today's session. All the resources that I used are on the slide that I'm currently displaying and they're available to you in the presentation that the tiny URL and or the QR code pictured on this screen will give you access to. And I know that Mary Elizabeth mentioned that she put the tiny URL into the chat line. As well as all of your resources as you talked about them. Oh my gosh. Great job. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.